Hi everyone, my name is Craig and I'm a professional video editor and producer and I create content for all sorts of clients. I specialize uh, specifically in concert video production as well as all sorts of event video production needs. I recently just received my Sony a7S III and I wanted to create this video to help anyone who might need some assistance in correcting their log footage. If you don't know what shooting in log means, it is essentially changing the color space of your camera so you can shoot in a flatter profile to retain uh, more color information. This gives you more latitude in post-production when it comes to correcting your footage and this way you as the director or editor can get the look that you specifically are going for. I actually shot this video in S-Log3 so I can show you a quick before and after. Uh, this way you can get a real time look at what S-Log3 looks like out of the camera and then what it looks like corrected in post-production. I also intentionally wore some really contrasty colors with the white hoodie, a black vest, and added a bunch of colorful background elements so you can get a sense of what S-Log is doing to retain the hue, the saturation, and the luminance information of any given scene. So to walk you through my color correction process from start to finish, I'm going to use some footage of a wedding I recently shot because there were some tough lighting conditions with strong shadows and harsh sunlight. I will also make all of this footage that I use in this video available to you to download so that you can work with this log footage from the A7S III and practice color correcting in the software of your choice. Now, let's shift over to the editing station and get started with our editing breakdown. Okay, so here we are in Premiere and I'm gonna just go ahead and break down my editing process for grading this S-Log3 footage for you guys. If you want to, you're welcome to right now go in the link in the description and click the Google Drive link where you're gonna be able to download this footage and you're welcome to follow along with this tutorial so you can learn how to color grade S-Log or you can do it after and use these files to just uh, play with Sony S-Log3 footage. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so with this first clip here, I think it's a really beautiful clip of this bride. Um, I'm showing you the correction uh, that we're gonna go ahead and, and try to recreate here. I've already made this correction, but I'm gonna go over to this clip right here, which actually doesn't have a correction made. And I'm gonna be making these adjustments on an adjustment layer. So the first thing I wanna do is actually begin with our RGB curves, and I'm gonna get my whites and blacks to a point where um, I'm comfortable just editing the rest of the clip. So what I'm gonna do is go into my uh, curves adjustment in Premiere and I'm looking at my uh, waveforms here and I'm gonna make sure that I get my whites up to around 90%, maybe 95% and I want my blacks to be almost to zero, I'd say right around uh, five to 10 on this, this luminance scale here. So what I'm gonna do is actually move this slider to the left and I'm liking the way that's looking right there and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the blacks but move them to the right. So we're basically just creating contrast um, with this RGB curve. And now I'm gonna make a bit of an S curve here. An S curve just creates more contrast. I can go into more detail in another video, but yeah, I'm gonna be making this S curve right here. And so now I have a good starting point. I like where my whites are. They're, you know, almost to 100%. My blacks are almost down to zero. And this is just a good reference. If I just turn off this layer for a second, you can see what we're doing. We're expanding this waveform. We're making um, the blacks blacker and the whites whiter. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna up the saturation and I found that uh, for S-Log3 footage, a great starting point for your saturation is going to be a value of 160. Um, so I'm just gonna go right to that. I'm gonna go up to 160 and see what it looks like. Okay, that looks great. I'm thinking I can go even a little bit further. I'm gonna push that a little more up to about 165, 168, looks great. I'm gonna up the vibrance just a hair, not too much. If you go too far with the vibrance, it starts looking real disgusting. So I'm honestly gonna do just like, you know, five to six to 10, just right in that area. I'm also gonna up the sharpening up to about 25. And I think that's a great starting point. We already have a beautiful image, but there are a few more things we can do to, to spice it up a little more. At this point, I'm actually gonna go to the basic corrections. And this is where I'm just gonna make minute detail. So I actually wanna up the exposure just a hair. Okay, and I'm gonna up the contrast as well. I'm gonna bring down those highlights. I'm gonna bring up the shadows a touch, up the whites, and then I'm gonna bring the blacks down until I'm seeing those blacks at zero. We're seeing the blacks at zero here, which is great, so I'm gonna leave that right there. I don't wanna go too far with it. Then I'm gonna go back to my curves, and I'm noticing that this image just doesn't feel like it's contrasty enough for me, so I'm gonna bring down these blacks even further in my curves adjustment. That's looking great right there, I love that. I also feel like it's a little bit too blue, so I'm gonna warm it up um, with my temperature slider, just about, you know, three 
a value of three, which is maybe like 300 Kelvin or so. Looking at our before and after right now, you can see it's, it's quite a dramatic shift already. And that's just with using our curves adjustments, what I can turn on and off, okay? Our creative tab, we're adding the saturation and the sharpening. And then our basic correction, we're making some minute adjustments to just get our final touches. We're gonna play it back for you here and we can see what that adjustment is doing. That's great. So that's the first clip. We're gonna move on to the second one. Just keep it rolling here. So this this is an interesting clip because the sun is like sort of behind a cloud, but it's also peeking through. So the first thing that I would do is I'd begin, again, same process. We're gonna make sure that our Lumetri scopes are open. So this vector scope is a way you're able to um, measure the color accuracy of your image. Um, that's a whole nother video, but I'm just referencing this because I, I always have it up, but we won't worry about it for this video. We're really just looking at our waveforms over here. So again, we're gonna start with our curves. We're gonna bring those highlights up to a point where we want them. And I know that this is the sun right here. It's this giant spike in the waveform. So it's okay that that value is, is peaking a bit because that is the sun. We expect that to peak. And we're gonna do the same thing with the blacks that we did last time, bring it down to a point where we're, we're feeling good about them. That's a great spot. Um, now I'm gonna do a bit of an S curve. Okay, that's great. Gonna to go to creative tab and then saturation up to 160. That's good. Vibrance up a hair, sharpening up a bit. That's a good starting point, we're gonna turn that off and on so we can see what we're doing. That's great. Over to the basic correction tab, I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit and then I'm gonna bring those highlights down. Contrast up, shadows up a hair, whites up a hair, blacks down. Looking at my waveforms right as they're hitting zero, gonna leave it right there. So something we're gonna do in this clip that I didn't do in the last clip is we're gonna select a specific color and then make adjustments to that color alone. Um, and for this image, we're gonna use the blues because I feel like the sky is just a little bit bright and I want to see more detail in the sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my curves tab and I'm gonna go to my hue versus luma curve tool and I'm gonna select the sky. And that's gonna generate these keyframes um, for the sky. So a luminance value is just the brightness of an image. So what we're gonna do is either increase the value of the sky or decrease. And in this instance, I'm wanting to decrease the value of the luminance so that the sky actually looks a little bit darker than it does. Right now it looks a little um, overexposed, so I wanna reduce that value of the luminance so we can see more of the sky. So I'm gonna widen out these keyframes here so we can get more of an influence of the sky. And so now when we grab this center point, if we bring this value up, we're seeing the sky's luminance values increase. If we bring it down, we're seeing the sky darken, which that looks absolutely horrible. I've never do that. We wanna find a sweet spot right in the middle. So going back to zero right here, I'm just wanting to bring it down just a hair. And that's great, that's a great spot. Now we're seeing more of the detail in the sky. If I turn this um, on and off, we can see the slight adjustment that it made, but I think it helps a lot. If you want to, this is where you could throw like a creative LUT on as well to, you know, oh my gosh. Wow. Don't do that. But you could throw a creative LUT on there if there's a LUT that you want to apply. That's like a Rec. 709 LUT, like something like this. Um, increase the intensity or decrease the intensity to just get the feel you're going for. Okay, moving on to the next clip here. Um, we have like this kind of first look style. So first things first, again, starting with the curves grabbing our highlights and getting those to where we want them. You need to turn on, here we go, getting our highlights to where we want them. I think right there's a great spot. Black, same thing, boom. Looking good. Okay. Gonna create a bit of an S curve here. That's great, great starting point. We're gonna go to creative, saturation up to 160-ish. I think it could go a little further, 165. Vibrance up a touch. And then, oh, not oh, sharpening. And then our sharpening up a hair. Another note for you on sharpening. The reason why I'm upping the sharpening on this image is because I'm shooting an S log. I wouldn't up the sharpening if I if I shot in another color profile. Specifically in my Sony A7S 3 I have lowered the sharpening to minus seven because I'd rather do that sharpening in post production. Um, so that's why I'm upping the sharpening. I wouldn't do this on if I shot on you know, an iPhone, or if I didn't shoot in a 
picture profile because that sharpening is already baked into the image. So that's the only reason I'm doing it here. I don't recommend you add a bunch of sharpening because you can actually increase your noise in the scene. But I shoot with my picture profile of S-Log3 with the sharpening all the way down, which is why I'm adding the sharpening. Okay, so we're already looking really good. I'm gonna toggle this on and off and I love the way it looks. I think there can be a couple more adjustments. I'm gonna up the warmth, just about two degrees. And this is where you begin to just play with your images and have fun in your basic corrections or in your color wheels, your vignetting. You can add these effects and you can make it look more like your own. Um, I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit. We up the exposure just a hair. I'm gonna up that contrast, bring those highlights down just a touch. Shadows up a hair, whites up a hair, blacks down to zero. We're hitting zero right here, that's great. I also feel like there's a little bit of purple in her arms and I wanna get rid of that. So an easy way we can do that is go to our HSL secondary and we're gonna select the color purple and I'm gonna see where that purple is registering and we can see that it is in her arms. Um, I can move that around, but yeah, we can see that her arms have that purple. And simply all I have to do is just maybe desaturate those purples a little bit. If you can see when I do this saturation slider up it, her arms look really purple, bring it down. And all I'm gonna do is desaturate that, you know, about 20%. And I think that helps a lot. One more thing I wanna do is go to my greens and I'm just gonna bring those green highlights down just like a literal millimeter because sometimes shooting an S-log, your greens can um, bleed through a little bit more. And so I'm gonna do that. And that's great. I love the way this image looks. I'm gonna up that contrast even more. I'm a contrast guy. Um, and so seeing this before and after, that looks awesome. I hope that this video helped you and feel free to leave a comment if there's any of these tools in Premiere that you want me to cover in greater detail. Things like the HSL secondary, using color curves and RGB curves to correct your footage. Let me know, I can go through some of these, uh, these tools in Premiere in greater depth. Again, all of this footage will be available for you in the description, so go ahead and download that footage and, and work with it yourself and learn to just correct Sony S-Log3 footage. Thanks so much for taking time to watch this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next one. Much love.